Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today, well not today, tomorrow we are gonna be processing all of these frozen tomatoes. These were tomatoes we grew in our garden last year and I didn't have time to process them and I threw them whole, skins on and everything, into the freezer and I just had them frozen <laughs> because I didn't have time to deal with them. But tomorrow is the day we're gonna deal with them. I'm gonna let them thaw in this roaster pan overnight and hopefully we will be able to slip the skins right off of them. We are gonna make this into two different styles of barbecue sauce, and I'm really excited about it. And we are going to be tackling, while that's cooking down, because that's gotta cook down for a while, a couple of the other drawers in this kitchen that we didn't get to when we did that deep organizational clean out, reorganizational of this kitchen, because I just, this cupboard was overwhelming to me. I really want to try to tackle this before we go into this next growing season so I don't have to think about it and we can just go into this next growing season with this kitchen completely put back together. So since those tomatoes need to thaw overnight, I will see you in the morning. I thought I would go ahead and show you what has happened out here before the sun goes down. Look at all of that. That is intense. This is all trenching. The coop, the new chicken coop is gonna be up here on this ridge and we need to get water and electricity up to the new coop we're gonna build. And this is all trenching for irrigation, not only for the garden, but for our lawn so that we can have a lawn. It is so nice out here today. I have not spent enough time out here. It's probably 55 degrees and, well, the sun is about to go down now, but I haven't been out here since they've trenched the garden for the irrigation. So this is new to you and new to me. Oh, wow. So over here is where the greenhouse is gonna be. So that little flag right there, that's where there's gonna be water to the greenhouse. Each one of these white boxes, that's gonna be one of our raised beds. And so the trench here is where the pipe is gonna go to go into the raised bed. So these big pipes here, which is this line right here that's gonna go down there, is what drains from our gutters, the roof. The original drainage ended right where this wall is and we can't have it draining into the wall because that would put too much pressure on the wall that they just built. So we're gonna bring that drainage down a little bit past the garden. And Josh's ultimate goal eventually is going to be rainwater catchment off the roof so we can do some watering of this garden off the roof but that will probably be next summer it looks like they need to do a little bit more trenching here but i baked them up some peanut butter cookies so i'm gonna go run inside and get them some peanut butter cookies they're probably heading home in about the next 15 minutes or so but this is huge progress so i'm excited it's just crazy to think that we are going to be hopefully harvesting some tomatoes from this garden this year but tomorrow we're going to be processing the tomatoes that we grew in last year's garden so I'm gonna go out and bring them some cookies to enjoy on their way home. And what we're gonna be making with these tomatoes is two different styles of barbecue sauce. This is a recipe out of my favorite canning cookbook. I can link it down below. A lot of you guys have mentioned that you have this canning cookbook now. It's the Ball Complete Book of Home Preservation. And we are gonna do, it's on page 262 in my edition, the two-in-one barbecue sauce. So you start with the main recipe and then you split it in two and you do a more traditional style barbecue sauce, which is perfect because that's what I want downstairs on my pantry shelf. I've never made a traditional barbecue sauce using tomatoes. I've only ever made rhubarb barbecue sauce before. So I'm excited about that. And then the other barbecue sauce that we're making is a sweet and sour barbecue sauce that has pineapple, soy sauce, and that just sounds really delicious as well because sweet and sour is something Josh and I really enjoy. So I'm kind of excited that I found this recipe in this book. And then my other main objective is while this is cooking down because it says it only takes 20 minutes, no, it says it takes an hour to cook down. I know that all recipes when it comes to tomatoes, especially when they're not all Roma tomatoes, garden fresh tomatoes, it takes longer than that. So while it's cooking down, I am going to work on organizing my spice Lazy Susan down there because it is a disaster <laughs> and it needs to be dealt with. So I want to keep my time in the kitchen as productive and efficient as possible. So we are going to try to get two projects done today. Barbecue sauce 
and organizing. So we need, let's see, the recipe calls for 16 cups of tomatoes. I have a lot more than 16 cups of tomatoes. I'm gonna say that this is probably a double batch. So we are going to chop up in our food processor two, it says puree, two cups of onions. And so I'm gonna do four cups of onions. We are gonna run this eventually through our food mill. So I don't need to peel these tomatoes. This recipe gives two different options when it comes to getting the peels and seeds off the tomatoes. Ooh, these are some strong onions. Off these tomatoes is to either peel them first or use a food mill. But because I'm gonna not only be putting onions in this and I want this sauce to be smooth, I'm gonna be putting some peppers. There's gonna be skins on the peppers. So I thought instead of trying to peel the tomatoes and then having texture from the peppers, let's go ahead and just run all of it through the food mill after it's done cooking. Oh, these are strong onions. These onions are kind of a medium size ish onion. So I'm going to put five of these into my food processor. So it says that it should be pureed onions. I didn't really think about that. So now I'm gonna measure out five cups of pureed onions. What I should have done is have my tomatoes thaw in my big quart pot, but I didn't think about that. So I'm gonna to have to transfer those tomatoes into this pot. All right, so we have one and we have two and a half cups of onions here, so I'm gonna to have to puree up some more. This is a water bath canning recipe because we're using tomatoes and there's gonna be sugar and there's gonna be vinegar in it, so we can water bath can this. But you don't want to mess with the ratios of onions and peppers to tomatoes and vinegar. You can add more vinegar, but you can't just go adding more tomatoes or more peppers and onions because that can change the safetiness of whether it can be water bath canned. So I, I am measuring out my onions and my peppers in this recipe. You can get creative once you get comfortable with canning, with messing around with the spices. But when it comes to the low acid foods like the, the peppers and onions, you need to stick with the ratio of peppers and onions to vinegar and tomatoes. So the next thing we need to puree up are some peppers. We have peppers from the garden. The onions that I just pureed up were onions that we bought from that local farmer. And these ones are a little bit hot, I think. I'm actually gonna taste one. Oh yeah, woo, those are hot. So I don't wanna put five cups of peppers in that pot because we wouldn't be able to eat it. Woo, oh my gosh. We do have, it's supposed to be green peppers. I've got some tricolor peppers here. These are bell peppers and they're sweet. Who that pepper is hot. So I'm gonna use these. I'm gonna throw a couple of these hot peppers in here, but maybe just a quarter of a cup or half cup or so, and the rest are gonna be the sweet peppers. So we need five cups of pureed peppers. I've never pureed frozen peppers before, so we're gonna see together how well this works. pretty well. All right, smells fantastic. Now we're gonna get this into our pot.
I want to start cooking this down because there is some ice from the peppers from them being frozen. So I'm going to turn the stove on and we're going to get this cooking. The colors in that are so pretty. I do want to get these tomatoes in the pot. Can you see how much liquid is in here? If I move that, there is so much liquid. This is tomato juice and from it being frozen. So I'm going to go ahead and strain out these tomatoes into the pot because if I put all that in there, it's going to take hours to cook this down. So I have a one of these sifter handle type things and we are going to go like this. And that's how we're going to transfer our tomatoes into our pot. So I'm not worrying about getting the skins off or the cores or anything like that because I am going to be running this through a food mill. When we run it through the food mill, it'll get all the skins, the seeds, and the cores. So that is one reason why I'm just not going to go ahead and take the time to skin these. I think that'll be the most efficient way to do it, but I'm not sure. This is not going to go to waste. I'll show you what we're going to do with this in just a minute. I do want to get these tomatoes broken down a little bit, so I'm going to use my immersion blender and I'm going to get this blended up. You can see how nice and smooth this is. I almost forgot one more ingredient. And this is some homegrown garlic that we peeled and just froze whole. I'm gonna put in a handful of these. I will blitz this with the immersion blender in once the garlic kind of softens a little bit. The cool thing about this recipe is the tomatoes are homegrown. The peppers are from the local farm that I bought the onions from and the garlic is homegrown. So the majority of this is either homegrown or locally sourced barbecue sauce. So now that we have this going, this is going to take a while to cook. We're going to go ahead and process this tomato juice. By having it thaw overnight and straining out this juice, this is saving us a ton of time of stovetop cooking down because if we didn't do this then all of this liquid would have to drain from the tomatoes. I'm going to give this tomato juice a taste test. I don't want to waste this tomato juice. I just want to make sure it tastes really good. Oh my gosh, that tastes like summer. That is beautiful. I really like to use this tomato juice to cook rice. Maybe we'll actually save some and we're, we're having tacos for dinner tonight. I like to make Mexican style rice. Instead of using water in my rice, I use this tomato juice. So we're going to get this canned up. But I want to save some for dinner tonight because that sounds like a really good thing to have for dinner tonight. So I just had the thought, before we move on to the tomato juice, we need to finish making our master barbecue sauce. So what we're doing is we're making a master, like a base barbecue sauce, and then we're going to split it in two and add different ingredients to get our two different barbecue sauces. And there's a couple more ingredients that we need to add to finish the base recipe. One of them is mustard seed. And it says they need to be crushed. So I'm going to use my mortar and pestle and crush it. If I had dried mustard powder, I would use that. I think I have it, but I don't know where it is. It's one reason I want to go through my spice cabinet and kind of get a better idea of what I have down there. So I'm going to crush two tablespoons at a time because I don't think I could crush the whole quarter cup in this little mortar and pestle all at once. Could probably use a spice grinder or a blender to do this as well. The other ingredient is celery seed. I don't have that, so we're going to skip that. And then it says two dried chili peppers seeded and crushed. I don't have chili peppers, and I added that spicy green pepper, so I think we're going to call that good for that. So now our base recipe is here, and this just needs to cook down, and we can move on to canning up our tomato juice. 
I have three quarts. I don't think I'm gonna need more than that. I've got a little sieve here. Let's see if I can do this without making a mess. I'm just using this to get out any of the tomato seeds. It smells like summer. I can't even get over how beautiful the smell of this tomato juice is. That perfectly fit into two quarts. I'm only gonna can one of these. The other one we're gonna use for dinner tonight. I do need to add two tablespoons of lemon juice to the one we're gonna can. We'll use this one for dinner. And just like that, we already have something ready to can. I will wait and I'll process this when I process some of the other things. So by taking out this tomato juice, we just saved ourselves having to cook down our barbecue sauce and reduce eight cups of liquid. And we're not only, we're not, I wouldn't call it wasting it if you cook it down, but we are getting a second product, which is awesome. We're getting, it's a it's a win, win, win. We not only get less cook time, but we get to make some delicious rice, or you could make um, a Bloody Mary, or you could use this in soups, whatever you want tomato juice for. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is get this dishwasher unloaded so I can load my dishes, because I think when we, we have got some time while this is cooking down, we're gonna tackle this spice cabinet, which it's so embarrassing and so bad, but I'm gonna need the dishwasher unloaded so that we can probably put some of these dishes into the dishwasher. One of the main reasons I wanna to get to organizing this spice cabinet today is because we organized oh, the baking cabinets and some of the other cupboards and things. And it's amazing how much more enjoyable it is to be in an organized environment. And that spice cabinet has been giving me some anxiety. I don't like to look at it. I try to ignore it, but I know it's there and I know it's a disaster. So today we're gonna tackle it so that we can just enjoy being in the kitchen that much more so that if I need to get something out of that spice cabinet, sometimes I just won't put whatever spice needs to go in a dish because I don't wanna deal with having to go into that cabinet. And I, I just throw in water everywhere. I want my kitchen to be an, a joy. I love being in the kitchen. And so I know that by taking some time today to organize that cabinet, that cupboard, we're gonna enjoy being in the kitchen that much more together. So it's kind of like giving a gift to myself by taking the time today to do that. But we need the dishwasher available for us to put dishes in. Now we have a cleaner environment to work in. We've got the dishwasher unloaded and loaded. Let's tackle this cabinet. Now it is just, I mean, it's bad. <laughs> I don't even know what half of it half's in here because I just, oh, see, here's our mustard powder. Found it. Oh my goodness. This is, yeah. So what we're gonna do first is what I always like to do is take everything out of the cabinet. And I don't even know what's down here either. Oh, here are our containers. Yeah. Goodness. Okay, so there's vinegar. There should not be vinegar in here. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is why we're doing this. This is the perfect example. In my Azure haul, I have, or Azure haul, in my Azure cart, I've been adding to it as this pantry challenge has been going on. I did not think I had any ginger. I have an entire pound of ginger. So this is perfect timing to go through all the spices, restock everything, and know what we have and what we don't have. So I need to take that off the list. So I'm gonna take a second here, pull all these spices and jars out of this cabinet, and we're gonna start fresh and get it clean. Alright, big step. We got this cupboard empty. 
I also want to go through this cupboard. This is where I keep my oils and vinegars, and I want to put some of the stuff that was down here, up there. So I'm going to empty this one too. Now that I have everything emptied and that cupboard clean, what I want to start doing is going through these spices and condensing things and actually getting rid of some things. I know that I have multiples of the same thing in here and there are some things that I've had for a long time and I just don't use them so I need to get rid of them. What I'm trying to do with my pantry, this is something that I'm just starting to think through, is I want to have a staple pantry. I don't want to keep a bunch of random things that I don't use that often. I want to keep a, like a standard set of spices and herbs that I use all the time and that I have less. I want it to be more minimal. I do store a ton of food. I buy in bulk. But I also, I, I don't want it to be overwhelming. And right now this is overwhelming to me. So what I'm going to do, well, what I'm going to condense. This is Korean red pepper flakes. I'm going to get all of the Korean red pepper flakes in one spot. I'm going to go through and condense everything. But the things that I'm just not using, they need to go. They need to find a different home. And I want to try to condense my stuff so that even though I have bulk, that's mustard, got two of these Korean red, or two of just red pepper flakes, get that in one container. I don't want to manage so much stuff. So I kind of, I definitely lean toward the more like minimal lifestyle or minimalism. I don't like to have a bunch of decorations. I, I like a little bit, but not a ton. And I want to try to have that philosophy of minimalism kind of come into my food storage. So even though I store 50 pounds of flour, I don't want to store 10 different types of flour. And that's what I'm working through with my pantry challenge right now is I'm working on using up those flours and things that I just don't go through that often. And then I want to try not to buy all that stuff so that I just have less to manage and I can keep an inventory on what I have a whole lot better. I don't want my extra bulk spices to be in two different spots, which right now they are in two different spots. I have a spot downstairs and a spot up here. So we need to condense them. So the things that are going downstairs, I've got a huge bucket of salt that needs to go down there. I'm going to keep this up here for refill, but I'm going to start stacking my my extras over here and those need to go downstairs so there's one spot for extra overflow spices. Some things I just need to compost like these green onion tops. These were from the garden from 2020 I think or 2021. I cut the green onion tops, I dehydrated them thinking I would use these as onion powder. I don't. So they're just taking up space. I'm not using them. It's a part of an onion you wouldn't use anyway, so I don't feel bad about throwing it away. I tried it, I don't like it, I don't, I mean it tastes good, I just don't use it, so we're gonna compost those. What I like to make with green onion chops is pesto. So we're gonna make more of that this year, hopefully, because I don't, I'm almost out of that. So I'm just gonna start condensing. I'm gonna get jars that need to be washed in one area, jars that need to be dumped for compost in one area, and I'm gonna start condensing and filling jars as well. So I want to talk about this philosophy of minimalism a little bit more because I don't think I was super, super clear. When we were moving, I was listening to a ton of podcasts and YouTubers about minimalism, and that was giving me inspiration I needed to purge a bunch of stuff while we were moving. And I can't tell you how nice it's been when I went through my clothes and my closet is very bare looking, but every single thing right now that's in my closet are items that I wear. So it almost feels like I have more clothes than when I had my closet just stuffed full of clothes that I didn't wear 90% of it. And I want to bring that philosophy into my food storage. Now, I that doesn't mean I don't want to buy in bulk. I love buying in bulk. The reason I buy in bulk is because I can get better quality food 
for a better price. And I don't run out of stuff. I can't stand running out of ingredients in the middle of a recipe. So it's not that I'm not gonna be buying bulk anymore, it's that I want to pare back the individual items that I have. I only wanna store the spices that I use on a daily basis. There are spices in this spice cabinet that have been sitting there for years and I feel guilty about getting rid of them because it feels like food waste to me or even like those green onion tops. I said I didn't feel bad about it, but the reason they've been in my pantry since 2020 is because I haven't wanted to get rid of it and I feel bad about it. So I'm releasing myself of that guilt and I am pairing back. I have noticed that when I, especially when I did the freezer, oh my goodness, I did get rid of some stuff in the freezer. Now everything when we organize those freezers are stuff that we use. It, I can't even explain to you the, the peace and feeling you get when you just have less to manage. And that's exactly what it feels like. So that's what I'm working on here is just enjoying the process of condensing things and pairing back and trying to evaluate what are the things that I use every day. And that is what the goal is here. So this right here is some homemade taco seasoning. I am just condensing it because it doesn't need to be into a half gallon container anymore. And I'm finding items in here that I just didn't know that I had as well. So this is great timing. One thing I'm also have decided I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna store a ton of extra spices. I'm gonna have just the spices upstairs, one jar of everything, and when those are done, I will then purchase more. I don't wanna store bulk spices extra because spices go bad and they lose their flavor. And I like to cook because I like food and I like the flavor of food. So I don't want a bunch of extra spices laying around that have the uh, the potential to kind of lose their best flavor so now i'm just condensing some vinegar here and we're making great progress I cannot believe how many jars we were able to clean out. This is incredible. All of these jars can be loaded into the dishwasher. That is why I wanted to get that dishwasher unloaded. But I have figured out the spices I'm gonna keep that are gonna go in the Lazy Susan and the spices over here that are gonna go back on the shelf next to my stove. So over here we have our Parmesan cheese. This is our freeze dried home. This is real Parmesan cheese that I freeze dried. We've got chopped onions. These are all from the garden. This is sage, thyme, rosemary, fennel is not from the garden. Dill, French onion soup, chipotle powder, chili powder, turmeric, cinnamon sticks, garlics. Uh, this is se homemade seasoned salt. I've gotten out of the habit of using this. I should because it's homemade and it is delicious. Our homemade taco seasoning, our homemade ranch powder seasoning. I have recipes for all three of these. I can link down below if you're interested. We're gonna keep a big bag of salt down there. Our mustard, this is mustard seed, our ground mustard. I wanna make homemade mustard pretty soon, so we're gonna to try to do that. And then this is some freeze-dried pulp from making hot sauce that is really, really yummy. And putting these back in the Lazy Susan, because they're ones that I don't use every day. The ones that I use every day have been sitting on my pantry shelf and that would be our Korean red pepper flakes, red pepper flakes, oregano, garlic, paprika, homemade parsley. Well, ginger might not go up there. Ginger might go down below because I don't use that every day. And coriander plus the ones that I already have up there. And that just makes that shelf really pretty. But first I need to make space for that. And these are the condiments or the spices or seasonings cooking, I don't know, vinegars and oils. <laughs> That's what these are. These are vinegars and oils that are gonna go back up in here. So the vinegars and oils, we're gonna keep our sesame oil, rice vinegar, balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar. This is our garlic infused avocado oil. I need to go downstairs and get an olive oil to put up here. I have one or avocado, doesn't matter. Our pepper, and I like to keep just whatever bottle of wine I'm cooking with at the time in that cupboard. So that is gonna go back in that cupboard. 
One thing that I've been meaning to do is bring up some rice and beans and have that upstairs because right now, every time I need to get rice, I have to go downstairs. I haven't done it because I haven't felt like I have enough jars in order to do that, which is kind of funny. And I didn't want to buy new jars, but now look at all these. I have six, six gallon jars that I just found <laughs> by organizing. So sometimes you just need to organize what you already have and you'll find what you need for other projects. That first jar I just put in there was coconut oil. Now these are the rest of our vinegars. This cupboard is looking a lot better. It was looking very, very messy before we got started. And I like to keep my pepper up here too. I'm not sure why I like to keep my pepper up there, but that looks a lot better. I'm gonna go run downstairs and get two oils to bring up here and then I'm going to bring this stuff downstairs because I already have it up here. I don't know why I had an extra coconut aminos and balsamic. I had two balsamics in here. Our extra paprika, extra honey. I don't need two honeys. Extra garlic, extra oregano, and then our salt. So I'm going to bring this downstairs and I'm going to bring up oil. I just grabbed a new garlic infused olive oil and I poured the rest of the one that was in here in here. So now we just have one garlic infused olive oil and now we have just a plain avocado oil we can bake with or cook with. And that is our oil and vinegar cupboard and it looks so much better. So happy with that. I need to empty that up there. I have a random bowl. I don't know what's in that bowl. A random jar. I don't know what's in there. And some pectin. That was some garlic salt and a bowl of garlic. So I need to go through because some of these garlic cloves are bad and some are fine. I don't know why I had that up there, but that doesn't need to be up there. So I'm calling this cupboard done now. We're gonna be making some jam here in just a little bit. So I'm gonna put that there, but overall very happy with this. Now we get to start putting spices back into this cupboard and I think it's gonna look a lot better than it did when we started. And I know everything that I have in here, I got rid of the stuff that I'm not using. If I'm not using it, I don't need it to take up space, both mentally and physically in my kitchen. I'm gonna put the more like herb thingies over here and the more spices over here. And this is what this cupboard or Lazy Susan is looking like now. There's so much empty space. Everything in here are items that I use. I do like to keep a big thing of salt so that I can refill my salt. And there's still so much space in here, but I don't want to fill that space. I'd like to keep it nice and empty if possible because these are the spices I actually use every day or on a regular basis, I should say. I went ahead and I washed all these jars as well so they're nice and clean. And these are the spices and herbs I use the most. So basil from the garden, cilantro, parsley from the garden, oregano from the garden, bay leaf, garlic from the garden, cumin. Now I definitely need more cumin. I look downstairs, I don't have any more. Coriander, paprika, red pepper flake, and Korean red pepper flake. And that is really beautiful. It feels good to have it clean and all the spices that I use all the time. One of the two major tasks we were going to get done today is done, and that's dealing with the spices. This barbecue sauce is now ready to strain. It's thickened. It's reduced from, ooh, from way up here to down here, and you can see how much thicker this is. So we're going to go ahead and get this onion tomato base, barbecue sauce base, run through the food mill. I have my food mill set up here with a pot down here. Half of this barbecue sauce we're gonna finish in this pot. It's the one that had the tomatoes in it to begin with. Oh, we need one more bowl. We need a bowl to catch the onion pulp. This might be too big of a bowl. Yep, that's not gonna work. Perfect. What this is doing 
is the juice and the pulp is coming out here. The seeds and skins are gonna come out here so it's separating the two. They make electric ones of these. I'm considering getting one that's a little bit more powerful. This has not been my favorite food mill. It's kind of cumbersome to set up. But I need to do some more research on that to see if it's worth the investment because the electric ones are pretty, they're an investment for sure. To our pot our roaster pan that we're gonna finish our two sauces in you can see how nice and thick that is now we have a nice beautiful tomato sauce it still needs to thicken down and we still need to add our other ingredients but the flavor on this is great I tasted it this is all the peels from the peppers the onions and the tomatoes along with the seeds I do want to try to get as much of this pulp from the outside of this food mill as I can. And then we need to divide this in half because half of this is gonna be our sweet and sour and half is gonna be our traditional. You can save those peels and skins. You could dehydrate them or freeze dry them. And use them as a powder. I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna let it cool and we'll give it to the chickens and they will be able to enjoy it. So I'm just eyeballing half of this. That looks about right. We'll finish, yep, we'll finish one sauce in this pot and one sauce in this roaster pan. So I'm gonna put these back on the stove. I'm gonna turn the stove back on, both of them. Kind of low though. That's still on. We have just this beautiful tomato sauce. Now I need to relook at these recipes. Some of these have some of the same ingredients and we are doubling them. Oh no, they don't have the same ingredients. But what I need to do now is I need to blend up pineapple. The sweet and sour sauce calls for crushed pineapple, which I don't have crushed pineapple, but I have pineapple out. So we are gonna make our own crushed pineapple. Someone must be, I think it's the landscapers the dogs just got really excited about. Yum. This is gonna be so good. So it, most sweet and sour, you know, calls for putting pineapple in it, but this is in the sauce. So this, I think this is a great idea. I think we're really gonna like this. Delicious. So this is gonna be our sweet and sour barbecue. I'm measuring out the honey. I did spray this measuring container with some avocado spray before I put the honey in here. We need one and a half cups of honey. One and a half cups of cider vinegar. One cup of soy sauce. Two tablespoons of ginger. And that's everything that the recipe calls for. I double checked, I triple checked. There's nowhere in the recipe does this call for salt. I am gonna add a little bit of salt. We'll taste it and then see if it needs more salt. And now we're gonna let this cook and thicken up. While this is doing that, we're gonna get going on our other barbecue sauce. We're gonna put, again, a cup and a half of cider vinegar. 
in here. For this recipe, it calls for a cup and a half of molasses. That is a lot of molasses. I don't want my barbecue sauce to be that molasses-y flavored. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna do a cup and a half of brown sugar because brown sugar is just white sugar and molasses. So this is gonna give us the sweetness we need for our barbecue sauce plus some of that molasses flavor. And then I'm also gonna add just a couple tablespoons of molasses. I know that if I added a cup and a half of molasses to this, I would not like it. I love the flavor of molasses, but I think that's gonna be too strong of a molasses flavor for barbecue sauce. So that's what I'm doing to substitute that. We're gonna add two thirds of a cup of Worcestershire sauce, a quarter of a cup of chili powder, and a tablespoon and a half of black pepper. Again, this recipe doesn't call for any salt, so I'm gonna add some salt, and then we will taste it to see if it needs any seasoning adjustments, whether it needs more sugar, more vinegar. This has been boiling away for probably about 45 minutes now, and you can see how nice and thick it is. It's leaving a trail behind, well, it was, you can see sometimes it's leaving a trail behind my spatula. This one is really thick. This one's thicker. So we're gonna give this a taste test. You can see how much it's reduced down so much. I'm gonna turn the stove off. And I have to be careful because this will burn your roof of your mouth and your tongue very easily. dripping it on my stove. Oh my goodness. Wow. The sweet and sour one, that pineapple flavor is coming through very strong, which makes sense because there's two cans of pineapple in here. That is so good. It definitely tastes very pineapple-y and that's that's delicious, absolutely delicious. Now let's taste the traditional barbecue sauce one. Whoa. I really like that. I like it a lot. Let's see how thick it is. You know, I think I'm gonna let it cook just a little bit longer. I wanna taste this pineapple one. I don't think this traditional one needs any seasoning adjusting. I think this pineapple one does. So I'm gonna taste it again. You know, I'm gonna turn this on. It's pretty sour. I think it needs because those pineapples were not, they were just pineapples and there was no added sugar to them. I think it needs a little bit more sugar to it. My sugar has some of these big clumps in it. I'm gonna add these to it as a way to get them out of my baking supplies. So I probably added about mm, a third of a cup of sugar to this. I want to make sure the flavor is on point before I put them in jars, before I put it in jars, so that I don't have to worry about adjusting the seasonings once I open the jar. I want it to go into the jar tasting delicious so that when I open the jar, it tastes delicious. And I don't worry about adding sugar. You can always add sugar to water bath canned items. This one's almost done. Yeah, that's exactly what it needed. A little bit more sugar to balance out the sourness from the vinegar and just the tartness from the pineapples themselves. 
That is really, really good. All right, I want to give this one just another taste test just to make sure that everything is on point before we put it in the jars. I decided to let these thicken just a little bit longer and now I think they're done. I'm gonna make a note in here what I did different so that if I wanna recreate this recipe, I can. I need to make a note that I did not put any celery seed and then I used cider vinegar in the traditional one instead of malt vinegar because I don't have malt vinegar in my house. And I added a little bit of extra sugar, which I need to add that to. I'm gonna say I probably added a half cup and I doubled this recipe. I'm gonna start doing this where I'm gonna put the date. Today's is February 2nd. I'm going to start writing in my candy cookbook and I'm gonna start using it as kind of like a journal of what I do. And so then when I go back, if I wanna make the same recipe, I can know when I made it last and what I did and I'm gonna put that I doubled this recipe today. All right, now these are ready to go. Let me show you what this is looking like. This is how I feel like I know it's thick enough. It's still bubbling, but it's very glossy because the sugars I think have melted and it's very, very thick. I want my barbecue sauce to be, oh, you can't see. That's the second one I've lost in there, but it's nice and thick and it'll thicken up a little bit too as it cools because of the sugar in it. See how thick it is? It's perfect. You can kind of see a trail. Now we can get this barbecue sauce in jars. This is the part we've been working towards this whole entire time. I don't know how many jars this is gonna fill. We'll just have to see. The recipe said that it should make about six pints for one recipe, so we should be getting about 12. We got six pints of the traditional barbecue sauce with one half pint, so that recipe was almost perfectly exact on how much it was gonna make. This is our pineapple or sweet and sour barbecue sauce. I'm filling up my canner with really hot, hot tap water. And I'm gonna get that water heating up before I put these jars of barbecue sauce in the canner because the contents of these jars are very hot. And I want my water that I'm gonna water bath can them and my jars about the same temperature so we don't break a jar. So because this barbecue sauce is so sticky, I need to really make sure that there's nothing on the rims before we put the lids on. I just like to feel around and make sure there's no nicks or cracks or anything on the rim of a jar. We got two, four, five of the pineapple and six of the traditional. I'm going to mark on each one of these jars 2023, not 2022, what they are before they go into the canner because they look very similar. I might not know what is what when they come out. Oh my gosh, it's 2023. I keep writing 2022. Okay, even now I need to make sure. Okay, yes, all of these are the barbecue sauce, just the traditional. And then this is the pineapple, uh, oh, sweet and sour. Sweet and sour BBQ. Sweet, sour. Oh, that's hot. These are hot. Hold them from the top. I'm gonna need to put a little bit more water to cover this jar. I'm gonna double check my canning times. And I am correct, 40 minutes for this as soon as it comes up to a rolling boil. 
I am gonna have to run two canner loads, this one first, and then, and then one more load with these three. I could pull out another canner, but I don't feel like dealing with that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and hand wash a couple of these dishes. I definitely want to get the big stock pot and my roaster pan washed because those will be very hard to wash if I let that completely cool. And I let the sugars harden on the side of that pan. Ask me how I know. It's better to go ahead and wash them up now. I have my dishwasher going. We got some serious progress and we got those tomatoes out of the freezer and into jars. We got the spice cabinet and my oil and vinegar cabinet organized and I am just so excited and I just am thrilled with the progress we made. I need to do a little bit of cleaning up here before we call it a day. I am gonna go ahead and make dinner right now while I have this going. I did get some rice going with that tomato juice in here so that I can just get dinner going and I can be done in the kitchen by the time our water bath canner is done. With probably our second round, we are gonna have tacos tonight and I'm pretty excited about it. I haven't had tacos in a while or haven't made tacos in a while, so it's gonna be a delicious dinner. I just wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my kitchen. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy it between now and my next upload. I will link any of the equipment that I used today down in the description box if you're interested in that. And I just wanna say thank you for being you, thank you for being here, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.